Oh no. <laughs> In case you were wondering, it's not supposed to look like that. <laughs> Hey everybody, so I have what I think is a pretty cool idea for a carving, and I'm going to show you all in a minute, but the whole theme of this is going to be the fact that you really don't need to spend any money if you don't want to on carving. You, I mean, you don't need to go out and buy like 50 to to $100 worth of wood and material to pretty much make something amazing out of whatever you find around you. So that's why today I'm going to be carving one of these well not really that would be very hard and next to impossible but I am going to be carving the the pine cone just with a twist I'm going to submerge it in resin I think it should look pretty awesome so to start I'm actually gonna just step one is just submerging this thing entirely and then from there we can get into what we're gonna be carving but yeah I want to get this in the resin as soon as possible because it takes three days for it to cure enough to actually carve on. Perfect. Well, we've got it completely submerged. Put the caps back on these. And I love the way that we got that gradient. You can see that I mixed the three colors up, and when you pour them together at the same time like that, what that does is it makes it kind of make swirls instead of actually blending. So we get this nice swirly gradient from red, orange, yellow. Ah, oh, that's awesome. I don't know why. I always, always, always forget to put gloves on. I mean, there's literally a box not two feet away from me, but I never put them on for some reason. Oh no, I just realized something. I was supposed to do this in multiple pours. Shoot. Yeah, this resin really doesn't like to be poured anything more than about an inch deep. So you get around that by pouring multiple layers, but that's definitely way more than an inch. Ooh, oh no, yeah, it's really starting to heat up. Well, this should be interesting. I thought my cup was inspired and like the perfect shape, but I am now recognizing that I should have went with thicker plastic if I was gonna make this, well, I guess I couldn't have foreseen myself being an idiot and doing this. I've learned this mistake the hard way too many times to continue to do it, you would assume. Oh no. <laughs> In case you were wondering, it's not supposed to look like that. <laughs> oh gosh. This is a disaster. I shouldn't have made that joke about the pinecone being cheap. I jinxed myself. It is literally, oh my gosh. I don't know if it's gonna show on camera, but it's literally smoking. Oh gosh, this stuff is so hot. Oh no. Look at how warped the plastic is. Oh, uh, there's no fixing this, I don't think. <laughs> we will find out, but. All right, this wasn't the plan. Uh, yeah, again, I say you'd think by now I would know not to do that, but. <laughs> So it doesn't melt through the plastic and pour out, it sh may be savable. I guess we will wait and see. <laughs> I went ahead and cut that top off because it's kind of hilarious, actually. 
keep it as a reminder as to why we don't do what I did with that. It's super hard though, so I'm actually good to start carving. Oh, that's so funny. Well, let's get to it. I guess that I should probably explain what I'm doing. So for right now, I'm just pretty much bringing the resin down to the pine cone. So yeah, let's, let's do it. Before we do that really quick, I just wanted to jump in and show you this gorgeous waterline agate and say that if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, maybe consider doing so. If you're really into rock hunting and fossils and carving, I'm doing this kind of stuff all the time and I would love to have you. <laughs> Well, we've got our shape roughed out. You can see all those little spots are actually where the pine cone is peeking through. And I think at this point, I ought to tell you what the plan is because it'll be pretty obvious here in a second, but I had a pretty cool idea. So pine cones need to burn to release their seeds. So I thought it would be kind of cool to carve a little ball of flame out of a pine cone, which is why I did yellow down here, orange right here, and then red at the top. And I think it's gonna look pretty cool. I'm gonna draw out my pattern really quick and we'll get going. All right, so for three-dimensional shapes, it's almost pointless to draw out your bottom layers until you have actually started shaping the outside. So the smartest thing to do is to mark your outermost point and start with that. So the outermost spot on this flame is gonna be this big curling branch. It's gonna be the outermost point and I'm gonna come in and carve this down and we can keep marking from there. Alrighty, well as you can see I've got a rough shape going. I think it's going to be pretty cool. Here I'll get a light out. You can see that color is going to be righteous once it gets that final, final coat over the top. It's going to glow like crazy. Oh, that's going to be so pretty. Okay, so now I'm going to go back over all of these Oh, what, are you, what would we call them? Tendrils, I guess? And add some horizontal and vertical lines just to give it more, more detail. And another reason for doing that right now is I'm trying to get all of my detail shaping done because as you can see, because of the disaster that I had and, you know, not using a product the way it's supposed to be used, <laughs> there are quite a few bubbles throughout the whole thing. So once I'm done shaping, all of the potential bubbles will be on the surface and yes, it will be a slow process, but I can go through and refill all of those. So all things considered, it's still in way better condition than it could be. <laughs> I think it's 100% savable and it's gonna look awesome when it's done. Went through and added all my extra detail and it's probably going to be hard to notice but once I sand and everything is smoothed out that is going to add a lot of flamey detail to it but check it out. This thing is going to be so cool. Well, alrighty everybody, we've got all of those holes filled in 
I've got it sanded up, smoothed out, everything is rounded over. I think we are actually ready to go with that final coat. Pine cone is almost done curing, so we need to get a base ready. So I think it only makes sense to use pine for said pine cone. finished. It looks so cool. <laughs> After the disaster I had with the resin, I was not sure how this was going to come out, but I think it looks wonderful. Super cool. I love the way when the light is shining through it that you can see the cross section of the pine cone. That is just so cool. Ah, I love it. Honestly, this piece is a good example of why you shouldn't just throw in the towel. Things are often more salvageable than you may think they are. You know, that's true of life in general, not just projects. <laughs> Alrighty, well, I think that is going to do it for this one. Go ahead and like the video if you feel that I earned it. I will definitely be making sure to have another one out very, very soon. This was just so much fun to make, but yeah, hope you all enjoyed. See you all soon. Mm -hmm.